Hi. Day two with the um, Umi Digi um, A7 Pro. And today I want to explore the camera a bit more. Well, the cameras, there's four of them. <laughs> right, and what you can do is you can go into the cameras and switch on AI and you get this screen. And it says, the intelligent identification of 13 scenes, easy to take good photos, people, flower, building, car, food, scenery, night, snow, plant, text, sky, animal, and sunset. Well, it's early morning, so I'm not gonna be able to get sunset. I don't have a pet. Um, I could probably do cars. Don't know about people. There's no one I can really ask around here whether they whether they want. Um, flowers, yes. Food, yes. Buildings, yes. Cars, yes. Scenery, yes. Night, not really. Plant, yes. Flower and plant. Uh, text, yes. Sky, yes. Unless I come across a cat or something, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do animals. Um... But that's it, that's the programme for today, so let's get out and about with the camera. Right, I've come back. Um, it's a bit of a mixed bag, to be honest. Um, nothing particularly wonderful. And some, uh, the builders are next door, I'm sorry if you can hear the buzzsaw. That's quite a good one, there's some quite good ones. Um, but generally speaking, it is definitely blowing out the whites, as we'll see later on, um, in high contrast situations, for instance, when we go down an alleyway. And even though we got AI on, the pictures are generally poorly saturated. Some of these are okay, that's the Morven Hills. Now that's zoomed in, right? It's obviously a pixel zoom. Um, a software zoom which is you know useless so don't bother with that um, here's one of the cars which is one of the things they suggested that's the Morven Hills go oh, that's acceptable again zoomed in you know not great that's normal and I just went for a little walk and took these pictures that's a bit better but again and what I'm going to do at the end of this vid is take them into, some of these into, look, see that's meant to be black. Take these into Affinity Photo and we'll have a look at them there and see what, see what they're like. In particular the levels. And so I was just wandering around taking photos. There's good depth of field there. And there. Um, I was just wandering around, although the background is a bit too <laughs> out of focus to be quite honest. Um, I was wandering around just taking things that caught my eye, um, but there's also a problem with focusing on some of these things. That's undersaturated, that one. You know, it all looks a bit pale. Again, sorry for the buzzsaw. No depth of field there. A little bit. It's a bit erratic, you know. The bricks are very undersaturated on that one. That's a bit better, isn't it? And this is all AI, but look at the white. You see, you see, if you went to the whites in those flowers, they're completely blown out. Um, now look at the end of the alleyway there. I've just taken photos of objects that caught my eye. See, that's all right, but there's no... See, uh, right, focus. Yeah. Ugh. Undersaturated, thank goodness you have to say. <laughs> Yar, ha <laughs> matey. That's taken through glass. That was okay, that one, actually. Right, focus. Right, look at, the, look at the end of the alleyway. Completely blown out. And there. As I say, we're going to take a look at some of these in Affinity Photo. Right, undersaturated. It's not a great day, but look at the clouds. You see no detail at all in the clouds. Right, now it gets terrible. Look at that. And there's a couple of the Abbey here that are shocking. 
Eh. Look at that. Completely blown out. Crap, we'll take that into affinity and have a look. Right, and we're coming to an end of these. There's a bit of text. Okay, those are all taken with AI on. And there's a couple more options I want to explore. I'll turn AI off. There's HDR here, which I can turn on. And there's also a macro option over here, which I want to turn on. And over here, we've got ultra wide angle mode. Okay, I don't think, no, there's, there's no others. What? What's it done? Okay, so um, I'm just going to go out and try those. I'll try HDR first, then um, macro, and then ultra wide angle. Oh, just a quickie, I've managed to get the um, that little program called Android File Transfer working. Here we are in Mac OS and the trick seems to be to get the program running first then plug the camera in. I think that must be it. Um, I can't think of any other reason why it should work. And for some reason I didn't try that yesterday although I'm sure I vaguely remember trying it yesterday. <laughs> but And then you just get a perfectly normal um, folder up. Right, Android, download movies, pictures. Nope, that's screenshots in there. If you go to DCIM and then open up camera, over there you will see all your JPEGs because it takes in JPEG format, and then at the bottom we've got the movies. Yeah, just a quickie. Right, HDR. Um, not much better to be quite honest. Nothing spectacular. Very undersaturated. Look at that. That's a bit better. Um, and I have to say, all right. First of all, here's the macro ones. Big problems focusing. This is the only decent photo I got. The next few will show you how it was just impossible to get it to focus properly. I didn't have any luck anyway, and I was definitely trying. You know. I gave it every chance. The wide angle ones just simply didn't, they just weren't taken. I, took, I actually went out again to take them because I couldn't find them on the camera and they just simply didn't exist. When, when, you, when, you, when I switched to wide angle, you got zilch. And here's a couple more HDR ones. Um, yeah, pretty poor to be quite honest. Well, very poor. <laughs> Right, here I've got some of these photos up in Affinity Photo and we're going to have a look at um, have a look at what's going on with them. Right now here's the first one I want to look at, this car, right? It's nice and sharp, you can't deny it's nice and sharp. This one was taken um, gosh, just with AI on. But the first thing I notice is the extraordinary angles of this building here. Look at that. What is going on, man? Right, let's uh, right, let's just straighten on that actually and see what's going on. Um, right, straighten. It looks like I did take it at a bit of a funny angle. Okay, that is possibly my fault, but if you look over, right, so that roof line, I've straightened it all up according to that roof line in the distance. Okay, and look how far out that angle is. Right, that's level, that roof line, look at that. That's almost as if it accidentally had an um, extra wide view on. And as I say, those photos didn't come out at all. They just weren't anywhere to be seen. 
Right, and principally this this is undersaturated. Okay, so we'll go layer, new adjustment layer. Actually, first of all, let's have a look at the levels because most most of the time I get a photo up, I always have a look at the levels first. So let's have a look at the levels on this. Right, actually, it's not too bad. There's a little bit of black. Right, can you see how it's darkening the blacks? It means basically there's information there that is recording basically nothing. So when you do that, the blacks are black, and as you can see, the whites are white. Let's try pulling that down just a bit to the edge of it. No, it doesn't make any difference. The sky in the background is still completely blown out. Let's do another, let's do a saturation. Uh, vibrance and saturation. Okay, let's go down to the saturation slider here and start turning that up a bit. Can you see? That is much more like it. But again, something else that's just caught my eye is look at the angle there. That's the edge of the garage. And look at the angle there. That is level. So <laughs> that's the problem with that one. Okay, let's have a look at this. Right, first of all, that is meant to be black um, or very near black. So the first thing we're going to do there is layer, new adjustment layer, levels. Right, and these blacks need to, needs to get a lot blacker. That is much more like it. Okay, the whites are okay, but we'll just a slight tweak to the whites, get rid of that spike. See? Much better. Okay, next one. Right. It's undersaturated. It's completely undersaturated. So layer, new adjustment layer, <coughs> vibrance. Is it, can you see how knocked back that is? You know, it's just it's just pale. So we'll turn up the saturation. Let's turn up the vibrance. It's starting to look a bit weird there. But that is more like it. The greens are greener, the reds are redder, the bricks look more like bricks. Can you see what this camera is doing? Right now, look at this. This is awful. Right, layer. New adjustment layer. <coughs> Levels. Okay, we're missing. Let's make those blacks black. White. Can you see? All these photos, they need serious tweaking. Right, and here we got the alleyway one, and the whites, it's just completely blown out. The We're in a dark alleyway, it's roofed, and it just can't cope with... Um, this is just completely overexposed, really. So, layer, new adjustment layer. Right, this is sort of one that you could actually mess around with quite, <laughs> quite a lot. But let's go levels. I always look at levels first. Okay, let's go this black's black. Whites, I'm not sure that this is going to make much difference. No. You see, the thing about processing photos is that if the information, if the camera has caught the information, we can bring it out. But if the camera hasn't caught the information, and there's literally nothing there, then there's nothing to bring out. So, I mean, you can mess around with this for, oh gosh, what do we want? I suppose we can have a look at brightness, contrast. Hmm, you could, uh, to be honest, this is one that I'd have to do a lot of work on to, to try and get that. So 
So there's nothing coming out on those whites in the back, if, even if you turn the contrast up. If you turn the contrast down, there's nothing there. I'm not sure what adjustment. I'd, I'd have to mess around with that, really, to just see if there is any information at all in that area there. Um, not good. Right, and here are the absolute doozies. <laughs> This is an AI photo of Cheeksbury Abbey. First thing, look, it's all completely out of focus and completely blown out there. So, layer, new adjustment layer. Right, well, phew, God, you take, he pays your money and he takes your choice, don't you? I mean, it's hopeless. I mean, imagine if you came to Cheeksbury, you took a couple of photos. See, look at that histogram. You took a couple of photos of the Abbey, got back home, and that's what came out. That reminds me of, you know, like shooting with very poor film. <laughs> um, I'm not sure what adjustment to make there, to be quite honest. Again, it's something I'd have to... It's, you know, it's hopeless, really, isn't it? I mean, it's, <laughs> it's absolutely hopeless. I don't suppose that's going to make any difference, is it? No. Um, yeah, dead loss. And again, this one, I'm not even bother. Look how out of focus those trees are. And the rest of it, I don't know whether it's in focus or not, because it's just crap, really. But you have to ask yourself, you know, what can you expect from a phone that costs 80 quid? But on the other hand, it does big up the fact that it's got four photos. Um, so that's a quick look at some of them in Affinity Photo. Let's just have a look at this one with, um, let's have a look at the levels in this one. Right, let's, let's, let's have a look at the uh, exposure. See, there is, there isn't even, at the top of the tower there, even if I go all the way down there, which obviously, I'm, you know, you wouldn't. But it's just picked out these bits here. Yeah. Try to darken, multiply. But again, I mean, you know, the trees are hopelessly out of focus. And this is with a camera with just... Um, hmm. Let's get rid of that, actually. Let's do a command J on that and see if any of these blend modes make any difference. Huh. That's actually better. <laughs> Weird nighttime ones. No. I mean, you know, all you. <sighs> You know, even if you messed around with this for hours, it would still be hopeless. You know, you're not, it's just a very, very poor photo. Okay, well. So, that is um, a look at the camera in AI and uh, with HDR and, um, well, the wide angle ones didn't even come out. So, What's the conclusion? Well, first thing I think we can conclude is that even I fell for the hype about four cameras. I thought, you know, with four cameras, how can you go wrong? But it's an 80 quid phone, so, you know, what can you expect? Um, you get the sort of quality photos you'd expect from an 80 quid phone. Um, it is obviously, well, nowhere near the quality of the stuff that comes out of the iPhone. Um, and why should it be? You know, it's 10% of the cost. Um, even less than that, you know, if you're talking about, I mean, how much is one of those 11, what they call maxes or pluses or whatever the hell they are? You know, you're looking at 1,300 quid there. So you've got every right to expect excellent photos from that. And from an 80 quid phone, you've got every right to expect, well, 80 quid's worth of photos. I wouldn't rely on it for your holiday snaps, put it like that. 
if you think of um, those ones I took at the Abbey, you know, with AI on, I mean, you're going to be very disappointed indeed when you when you come to download them onto your computer or upload them. So um, it definitely has problems. I mean, it has problems with all the blown out sky and what have you. After I finished that, I went. I, I took one of them back in, one of those Abbey photos into Affinity, and I realised I hadn't tried curves, uh, curves adjustments, but there's nothing there. And, <laughs> There's nothing there in the sky and, you know, the blown out bits, it's basically empty. So, you know, don't expect too much. Don't fall for the hype that it's got four ca cameras because you're not, it's not the sort of camera that, you, I don't know. I mean, it's okay for a snaps for stuff that's um, close to, don't bother with the macro because that has problems focusing. Um, just leave it in, you know, normal mode and don't look to it to take high quality photos because it's not going to do that. It, it's just not equipped to do that. And it's 80 quid. Um, so you pays your money and you takes your choice, as they say. OK, well, I think that's me finished looking, looking at the cameras. Um, Thanks very much indeed for watching once again, and I'll see you next time.